This one I really had fun with. I think it takes a path I have not even explored at all. So, sit back, relax. It's here's the background. Luke Skywalker wants to join the Imperial Academy. So his whole life he's wanted to get off Tatooine, and he has not had Ben Kenobi. As Ben Kenobi has actually been off with Leia. After the events of the Kenobi show, Kenobi decided it was better suited that he go off with Leia. So that's the background, that's the premise, that's very important to this story. So stay tuned, let's get into it. Luke Skywalker, a young boy on Tatooine, had spent almost his entire life dreaming of getting off world. He wanted to fight, he wanted to do something meaningful, as something was different about him. For his entire life, Luke was the best among all of his friends at hunting, building, really any tasks around the farm, anything. Even flying speeders came so naturally to the young boy. He wanted to use his talents elsewhere, and he knew there was places that he could utilize these talents. Luke had just turned 19 years old, and he'd spent the last year making a plan to get off world. He'd been secretly working extra jobs for anyone in need in the nearby towns, and he was turning into the go-to guy for any of these secret jobs. He was scavenging, stealing, and he'd even gotten into a fair amount of skirmishes with others around the towns. And Luke, Luke had turned himself into a good fighter. There was an anger deep inside of him that aided him in these fights. And on one night, he'd even been cornered by a group of sand people while going on a heist for the against the sand people he was trying to steal something from them and he was caught he was cornered and a small group of them intended on killing him at least luke was sure that they had intended on killing him he was scared he was angry and he'd released something inside of him something that made these sand people fly backwards killing them rather instantly whatever this was luke feared it Luke hid it away inside of him, scared of the power, but he liked it secretly. He liked the way it felt, and he wanted to tap back into it, but he just couldn't. He just, there'd be days where he was scared, afraid of this power, not wanting to ever see it, but then there'd be days where he just wanted it back, wanted to know. He was unsure of what he wanted in life, unsure of anything really, and eventually, He'd convinced himself it was just a one-time thing. Never told anybody. But either way, Luke eventually saved up enough money to leave Tatooine and head to Corellia, where he had heard the Empire was doing some strong recruiting at the moment. He thought, may as well join the Empire. Not much else to do, and he wanted to join the fight. He didn't know much about the Empire, didn't know much about anything out on Tatooine. But he knew he wanted to be a part of something bigger, wanted to prove himself wanted to fight. And back at home now, Luke told his aunt and uncle that he was headed into Moss Eisley to pick up the parts that he needed for a protocol droid he was building. Owen and Baru, they loved Luke, but he had become rather distant in years, and they feared he was going down a similar path to his father. They wished Obi-Wan was still here, but years ago the Jedi had gone to Alderaan, a mission to save Luke's sister, Leia, had convinced Obi-Wan that she was in much more danger than Luke. Owen and Baru understood why Obi-Wan went to Leia, but Luke was becoming dangerous. They didn't talk about it, but they knew. And they didn't stop Luke from traveling into Mos Eisley on this day. And so Luke packed what he needed, and he headed in to Mos Eisley. The spaceport town was never pleasant to visit. Scummy dwellers from around the galaxy doing anything possible to earn a few credits, and Luke entered the nearest cantina to look for smugglers or anyone preparing to leave soon. As he entered, a dead Rodian was being dragged out. Sounds about right for this town, thought Luke, as he walked in and looked around. Didn't see much that he wanted to get himself into, but eventually he spotted a pair of smugglers that looked experienced enough. One was a human, like Luke, but the other was covered in fur, perhaps one of these Wookiees Luke had read about. He made his way over, and then they all reached the door at the same time. I'm looking for a ride, and I can pay well, said Luke. Straight to the point was likely the best path here. Well, kid, you might be in luck. We're in need of some extra credits. 
Where are you headed? The man asked. Corellia, Luke replied. The man looked at him, looked at the Wookiee, and said, Well, all right, we're headed that way. Ten thousand credits and you've got yourself a deal, kid. Luke had just enough. Well, he had twelve thousand, but he told the man he had just ten. Keep a few, just in case. And the three of them boarded the beaten-up ship the man called the Millennium Falcon, and he called it the fastest ship Luke would ever see, saying something about the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs, whatever that meant. Luke wasn't sure that this man's relationship with the ship was healthy, but he'd get the job done, that was for sure. As they boarded, Luke asked for their names. I'm Han, and this is Chewie. The Wookiee growled in agreement, and Luke gave his own, own name as the ship took off. Luke had never been off the planet before. He couldn't help but ask Han all sorts of questions, which clearly annoyed Han, but he still couldn't help telling a few stories about how great of a pilot he was, a bit full of himself. And the ship landed on Corellia eventually. Luke got off, thanking Han and Chewie and saying, perhaps in another life we would have made a good crew together. Han chuckled and said, all right, kid, hope you find what you're looking for as the door to the Falcon lifted up. Alone, on a new world, Luke went to join the Imperial Academy. He walked up to the Academy recruiting station, where the man went through a series of questions before he was to get in. When asking for his name, Luke gave his true name, Luke Skywalker, and the man seemed to hesitate. Skywalker, you say? Sounds familiar. And then he went about his business. Luke thought it was a bit weird, as his last name wasn't exactly one that he'd considered to be common, but he moved on. Won't be needing the name much around here anyway, the guy said as he moved on. Clearly, he was set to be just another number, but Luke didn't plan on being just another number around here. He was going to excel. He was going to show that he was among the best of the best. He never had any proper training, but Luke didn't think he needed it. He'd get it here, he'd get it now and he'd rise quickly, rise up the ranks, proving that he was bigger than just a farmer on Tatooine. And over the next handful of weeks, Luke trained for a role in the Empire. He trained with other new cadets, and similar to his life on Tatooine, he excelled among his peers. He was quickly moved up to a new role where he participated in flying training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, sniper training, and everything else high-ranking troopers would participate in to see where he would eventually go. Luke, as he did this, just had this feeling inside of him, this feeling of confidence, being able to make moves without even thinking, just excelling, knew, knowing he'd be so good at this, and he was. But Luke still wasn't sure exactly what he wanted out of it, what his future was going to be. But he loved this much more than sitting around moisture farming on Tatooine. He still wasn't free, but he was at least more in his element now, and he was showing off. His first battle, actually, came shortly after that as he was training on a planet called Navarro that the Empire controlled. Luke was becoming a favorite of Imperial leaders. Wherever he was, wherever he was training, the leaders seemed to take extra attention to him. And how couldn't they? Luke was among the best. And as he became a favorite, he, with his impressive quickness, his sense for battle, they were also impressed with Luke's loyalty to the Empire overall. Many troopers, once they got in, hesitated with how the Empire did things, but Luke was different, and maybe that's because he could tell. He truly was different in almost every aspect. He could be where the leaders stood. And there wasn't much that Luke refused to do. Little did Luke truly understand the Force, if at all, but he knew that he had power and his untrained power let loose. It was a power that the Empire was only scratching the surface of, and they knew it. While on Navarro, though, a group of rebels, led by former Imperial agent Callus, executed an ambush on the station that Luke was at. Along with Luke, there were two Imperial leaders and about 15 soldiers or recruits like him. As the battle ensued, Callus took out one of the leaders, and 10 of Luke's fellow troops were taken out by rebels as Luke began firing back. As he fought, a sense of something inside of him, this something that kept nagging at Luke, kept nagging to be let loose, 
It was inside of him. Luke could feel it, and it gave him extreme confidence. He embraced it, and he emerged from his cover spot wearing the white armor and took fire at the 13 remaining rebels. He took out five with five accurate shots, then flipped behind a crate as the others fired at him. His leap behind the crate, almost impossible. And then he took out two more while peeking around the corner, barely even needing to see them. While focusing on Luke, three more rebels were shot down by his, by his comrades, and Luke jumped from behind the crate, shot two more before landing, leaving only Callus. Luke walked up to him now, a darkness surrounding him, a darkness that he embraced, and he looked at Callus. He loved the feeling this power gave him, and he said, Traitor, before shooting him down. The remaining leader walked up to Luke with a smile on his face. Luke had thought for a second that he would get into trouble for shooting down a surrendering rebel, but just the opposite was the case. You have continuously impressed the Empire in your early days, Trooper. I have been instructed to send any impressive recruits to the newest creation of the Empire, the newest battle station. Luke didn't know exactly what this meant, but he was ready for anything. And a bit later, Luke was recruited aboard the Death Star, the new battle station of the Empire. He was quickly working his way up in the ranks of the Empire, and he even earned himself a meeting with Young Trooper, you have impressed every commander at every station you've been a part of. You've outperformed every other recruit. We are now headed to the Rebel Base on Yavin 4, where we expect heavy resistance, but where we will use this battle station to destroy their base. I would like you in a TIE fighter for this battle. I am excited to see you in action. Luke hesitated a bit. He'd never flown in a real battle. But in all the trainings, he was the best. He knew he could do it, but before he had a chance to respond, Tarkin turned to the window as the Death Star came out of hyperspace above Yavin. We will reach their moon shortly. Prepare yourself for battle. Finally, Luke responded. Yes, Grand Admiral. On Yavin 4, some essential rebellion personnel began to evacuate, including Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Leia, who was training to become a Jedi for the last eight years or so. This was not their time to strike. They did not have the upper hand here. They began to evacuate, and the battle ensued. Luke got into a TIE fighter, and as he thought he would be, he was a natural. Rebel X-Wings were truly no match for him, and the Death Star approached the moon. Luke began to wonder, what was the plan of these rebels? This battle station seemed indestructible especially to just a group of TIE fighters. But then, as Luke was flying around, shooting down X-Wing after X-Wing, a metallic, scary voice spoke to him in his TIE fighter. There were whispers around the Empire about a huge, dark figure that ruled with power, ruled with fear, and somehow, Luke knew this was him. Trooper, join me immediately in the trenches of the Death Star, the rebels have discovered an exhaust port that they plan to use to destroy this station. Luke was nearly frozen in fear and shock, but this was his chance. He snapped out of it and followed the dark shadow in his special TIE fighter down into the trench. Luke flew on his right side, barely keeping up with the shadow's impressive flying. The dark shadow fired and destroyed one of the three X-Wings they were chasing, but the other two were nearing the port. As they approached, Luke fired in and fired, taking out another. One X-Wing remained, and the TIE fighters couldn't hit it. As the final X-Wing was about to fire into the port, Luke and the Dark Shadow had one more chance. They lined up their shots perfectly, hitting the final Rebel fighter, destroying the X-Wing. The Death Star was safe, as no other X-Wings had time to get down to the exhaust port, and they were in range of the rebel base. X-Wings began to evacuate as Luke got another comm into his TIE fighter. All fighters retreat to the Death Star. Today we deal a blow to the rebellion they may never recover from. Luke celebrated a bit to himself, and he began to land his TIE 
in the Death Star as he heard it, the beam powering up and firing a lethal strike directly into Yavin 4, blowing it to a billion pieces. A few rebel ships seemed to escape, but they were scattered now, without a base. Luke got out of his ship, satisfied with his performance. He'd shown the Empire exactly what he was capable of, and as he began walking toward the barracks, an icy presence formed behind him. Who are you? The dark shadow asked. Luke turned around and looked at him. There he was, more menacing, more scary than he could have ever thought. Just someone showing the Empire what I'm capable of, replied Luke, trying to keep his voice steady. The dark shadow stared at him, metallic breathing in and out, in and out, completely unwavering. What is your name? He asked finally, almost reluctantly. My name? Luke. Luke Skywalker, he replied. Vader's mask remained the same, but underneath the mask, his face had a look of shock, sadness, anger, and confusion. He reached out in the Force, and he'd felt the same things he'd felt in Anakin Skywalker years ago. Power. Hunger for power, anger, arrogance, but a side of humanity and the light fighting off the growing darkness inside of this boy. Vader thought, and he knew, this was the son of Anakin Skywalker. This was Vader's destiny, and this was Luke's destiny for them to meet up, for them to take control, for them to train together, for Vader to train Luke to take down the Emperor for Vader to finally rule, alone, with his son. Come with me, young Luke. You have only begun your true destiny. And Luke followed. The rebellion had lost. They were scattered across the galaxy after the Death Star blew up Yavin 4. No main base, many leaders gone, so few options remaining. But this was not the first time Obi-Wan had seen a loss like this, and the same could be said for Leia. Obi-Wan had lost the entire Jedi Order, and Leia lost her planet to that exact battle station. They would continue to be persistent, together. Leia had grown very strong in the light side of the Force, and Obi-Wan had now been training her for roughly nine years in secret from everyone except for a few people on Alderaan. They were both hurt by the loss of Yavin, but they knew it was going to be up to them to ultimately destroy the Sith and restore peace. It had now been a few months since the Death Star blew up their base, and they had to strike back soon. But Obi-Wan did not think they could do it alone. They would go get help. They would go to Luke and get him to join the fight against the Empire. Hope remained for the Jedi, Obi-Wan thought. Across the galaxy, immediately after the Empire's crushing victory above Yavin, Luke was following the Dark Shadow, many hallways through the Death Star. His metallic steps and giant paces in his enormous body were all intimidating, but Luke still followed closely behind. He wanted a chance to show what he was capable of, and now he was getting it. The two entered a room that was clearly where the Shadow resided and Luke looked around at the cybernetic parts and the large chamber in front of him. My home on the sands of Tatooine was more comfortable than this, thought Luke. And the shadow spoke. You are powerful, young Luke. Are you aware of the power inside of you, the darkness inside of you? He asked. And Luke replied, I am, but I don't know what it is. I'm afraid of it. But every day I feel it growing, some days tearing me apart, but other days making me the best version of myself. The shadow stared at him and replied, You are far from the best version of yourself, but we share this dark power. You are strong in the Force, Luke, and with my training, you can become the strongest being in the galaxy. Luke paced around the room. He knew he was special. But strongest in the galaxy? How could that be? Luke spoke again. How do you know this? I don't even know who you truly are. Vader replied now like he was waiting for this question. 
I am Darth Vader, Lord of the Sith, formerly a Jedi called Anakin Skywalker. And for the first time in my life, I have found out that I have a child. Luke, you are my child, and with my training we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Luke knew it to be true. With the power and the feeling inside of him, he could tell Vader, Anakin, was not lying. His entire life was turned upside down. Why had he been wasting it on Tatooine? He could have accomplished so much. Why was he held back his entire life? Emotions ran through him. The dark feeling rose. Vader spoke, do not hide your feelings. Let them erupt, and in, tr and in time, you will control them with my help. And so Luke did it. He didn't hide away from the powerful feeling, but rather he let it explode out of him, destroying machines around the room, making Vader even take a small step back. Luke loved this powerful feeling. I will train with you, father. And so the future of the galaxy was forever changed. Over the next couple months, Luke would train with Vader, but he had to be kept hidden from the galaxy. According to the altered logs, Luke had died above Yavin in a heroic sacrifice to save the Death Star. Vader was the only person in the galaxy to know about what Luke was truly doing. The Empire had won for now and silenced the rebellion during this time. So Luke and Vader had plenty of time to train together in Vader's castle on Mustafar. Luke trained and he learned. He learned about the Jedi, how they betrayed the Republic everything that had gone on during the Clone Wars. But Vader overall was very secretive. On some days though, he would talk about Padme, Luke's mother. But that was usually after the more rigorous training days, trying to remind Luke why they were doing everything, why they were together. And Luke grew powerful, more powerful than Anakin at his age, but he really had no idea how to use the power. Vader was molding him to make sure he was perfect he would test his limits. He would turn Luke into what Anakin should have been. And after a month of intense training in the Force, Luke had a mission. He was to kill a Jedi hidden away on the planet of Thespius. It was an old Jedi Master who had been around since the High Republic days and had now made the mistake of returning to his home world. Vader told Luke, I have an assignment for you, young Luke. Before we begin your lightsaber training, you must first acquire a lightsaber from a fallen Jedi. Former Jedi Council member Oppo Rancis is hidden at these coordinates on his home planet of Thespius. Kill him, and your strength in the Force will be proven. Luke was ready for this opportunity. Yes, father, he responded and he took off to kill the Jedi. He was unaware that Vader followed, just in case. Luke eventually landed on the rocky planet, and over a couple hours, he scouted out the location of the Jedi Master. Eventually, Luke was in a cave, and he'd climbed above where Oppo was meditating. A shift in the force caused Oppo to wake. It's about time the Empire found me, he said out loud before igniting his lightsaber and looking at Luke, who had a hood covering his face. This was it, a true test for Luke, and one he would win. He jumped, at, he jumped down now for a fair battle. The two warriors faced each other in the barren, rocky terrain of the cave. Oppo Rancis held his lightsaber at the ready while Luke Skywalker stood poised, his hands outstretched, ready to unleash the power of the Force. Oppo charged towards Luke with his lightsaber, unleashing a flurry of strikes, but Luke dodged the attacks with rather ease, using his agility to avoid the deadly blade. His agility had grown strong, one of his better strengths, and Oppo continued his assault. Luke focused his energy and sent a powerful force push towards his opponent, knocking him off balance. But Oppo would regain his balance using the force to send rocks at Luke from behind him, which Luke would dodge, but he barely then noticed the lightsaber flying at him, cutting his cheek as he dodged at the last second. 
Luke staggered. Things were not looking good for him at this point. And suddenly, Vader dropped down. Luke yelled, stay away, before pushing Vader very far with the force. Determined once again, he was going to do this. He was going to prove himself alone. Now. Oppo charged again, this time a fierce determination, but Luke was more ready, and he raised his hand. Oppo suddenly found himself lifted in the air, held there by the power of the force. Luke stepped forward, eyes locked on his lightsaber, and with a sudden burst of energy, Luke used the force to wrench the weapon from Oppo's grasp, sending it flying through the air. With his lightsaber gone, Oppo was defenseless against Luke, and Luke continued to use the force to pummel him with unseen blows, sending the Jedi Master crashing to the ground. Finally, Oppo lay still. Defeated, Luke approached him, holding his own lightsaber in his hand, and he ignited it through the chest of the broken Jedi, killing him. Luke then walked to Vader, the green saber in his hand. You doubted me? Luke asked. No, Vader replied. Just a bit of extra motivation, said Vader, and the two headed back towards Mustafar. Luke had won. He was nearly ready. And over the next month, he gained training in lightsaber combat. He'd bled the saber that he'd won in combat to match the crimson red of Vader. And much in his training of the Force, he excelled at lightsaber combat as well. Training on Mustafar, in the castle, or in the lava flats, Luke was prepared and ready for anything. And eventually, Luke and Vader were talking after a training duel. Luke asked what the Jedi were like before they betrayed the Republic. Vader explained that they were once wise, strong, hopeful, and a beacon of light for the galaxy. But then everything turned, and Luke told Vader, The Jedi remind me of a man I knew on as a child back on Tatooine. Old Ben Kenobi, Luke said. Vader stood up and looked at Luke with ferocity he'd never seen. Obi-Wan Kenobi? He is the man who put me in this suit, the Jedi traitor that cut me apart on the lava flats. You know him? Luke stammered, Father, it's been at least a decade since I last saw him. I had no idea. He disappeared when I was only a child. I only spoke to him once. Vader seemed to calm himself. Very well. But who would know where he is now? He asked. Luke replied, Perhaps only my aunt and uncle. But they've, they've done nothing wrong. We shouldn't hurt them. They've hidden perhaps the most dangerous Jedi in the galaxy from the Empire for years, Vader replied. But if they reveal his location, they will live. And they took off for Tatooine. At the same time, from the beginning of today's story, Obi-Wan and Leia were also headed for Tatooine, with their mission to finally recruit Luke to their cause. Vader and Luke landed on Tatooine, stepped onto the sands, the Lars homestead was in their sights. Luke remarked, I don't like sand, and Vader agreed. They would get the information needed and get out of here. And finally, Luke reached the home and called out, Uncle Owen, Aunt Beru, it's Luke. And the two made their way up the stairs into the opening, seeing Luke like they've never seen him before and seeing Vader alongside him. Luke, what's, who, what? What's going on? Where, where have you been? Who is this? They said, looking in confusion and fear at Vader. Where is Kenobi? Vader said. That is what we are here for. You will tell us or you will die. We haven't seen Kenobi in years, Owen said. He didn't tell us where he was going. For our own safety. And Vader lifted him up by the throat. Luke wanted him to stop, but Vader was his real family after all. Luke had embraced the dark side, embraced the Sith. This was his path now. Owen struggled, he struggled in the air, and suddenly a ship flew above them, and two figures leapt out, igniting their blue lightsabers. Put him down, Vader. Now. And so Vader did, simply because he no longer cared about Owen and Beru. Obi-Wan Kenobi was now standing right in front of him. And he had an apprentice, a girl, roughly the same age as Luke. 
Obi-Wan, at last you reveal yourself to me. I hope you can now see your hide your failure in hiding my child from me. Luke emerged from behind Vader. Kenobi looked saddened for a moment before speaking. Not exactly, Doth. Leia here is living proof of the good that was once a part of you. Vader realized that he had twins, and Obi-Wan had truly taken one of them from him and corrupted her to become a Jedi. Vader ignited his saber. Obi-Wan did the same and assumed his Jedi pose. Obi-Wan realized trying to get Vader to come back to the light was no use, and Luke, well, he just looked corrupted. Vader, Vader had done it. Obi-Wan was too late. Obi-Wan left him, and Luke went down the dark path, the same as his father. Obi-Wan had to protect the Jedi. He had to kill Vader. And if that meant also killing Luke, so be it. Luke and Leia, each at their master's side, also ignited their sabers. Luke red, Leia blue, and the battle began. Vader and Luke charged towards Obi-Wan and Leia, their lightsabers blazing to life. Obi-Wan and Leia quickly raised their own lightsabers in defense, and the fight began. Vader and Luke much more offensive, Leia and Obi-Wan much more defensive in their styles. And Obi-Wan was rather quick to strike when there was an opening, but Vader parried his blows with ease. Meanwhile, Luke engaged Leia in a flurry of attacks. The two of them matched evenly in skill. As the fight raged on, the combatants moved fluidly across the arena, their lightsabers clashing, sparks flying across the desert. Obi-Wan and Leia worked together in rather perfect harmony. They had been training for years after all. They used their teamwork, gaining an upper hand against their opponents now. However, Vader and Luke were not easily defeated, and with their immense power in the Force, they were able to launch a devastating counterattack that put Obi-Wan and Leia back on their defensive approach. And despite their best efforts, the two Jedi found themselves slowly losing ground to the powerful Sith Lords. Vader and Luke's skill in the dark side was too much for them to continue to handle right now. It seemed that victory was becoming inevitable for the Sith Lords, and Obi-Wan's best days were clearly behind him. But Leia had grown extremely strong in the Force as a Jedi, using both her powers in the light and occasionally tapping into the dark. Eventually, the four converged on each other as Vader cut Obi-Wan across the chest, sending him to the ground, and Leia used this moment to push Luke away, grabbed Vader's respirator with the Force. She began to crush it, using some hidden away anger for what Vader just did to Kenobi. Vader cut off the Force connection and charged her, but Leia was ready. From a distance, Luke threw his own saber at her. Leia caught it in mid-air, throwing it into the chest of the unsuspecting Vader. He dropped to his knees as Luke screamed, No! and called the saber back to him. Luke and Leia were about to engage in an intense battle to the death when Vader halted Luke, and with raspy breathing he spoke, Luke, join your sister. Kill the Emperor. It is your destinies. It was my destiny. Obi-Wan's destiny, perhaps, to bring you together. It will be my final victory. And then Vader fell to the ground. Luke deactivated his saber, went to his dead father now, and Leia did the same with Kenobi, where he lay, giving his final breaths. Your father, he is right. Help your brother see the light. Destroy the Emperor with your combined power, save the galaxy, and he died like Vader. Luke and Leia got up simultaneously. They stared at each other, confused and a bit lost without their masters. Their power together would be insane, but they didn't quite know each other. But they were siblings, they could feel it. They could feel each other's power, the connection that had just been waiting years to finally reach each other, and finally, Leia reached out her hand. Join me, brother. We will kill the Emperor, as both our masters intended. We will avenge them. It is our destiny. Luke reached out, grabbed Leia's hand. You're right, Leia. Together. Luke and Leia sat around a fire on the planet of Kashyyyk. 
The Death Star was orbiting with Emperor Palpatine on it above the planet, and the siblings were about ready to attack the Emperor on the battle station. It was above Kashyyyk as an intimidation tactic, getting the Wookiees to do the Empire's bidding. Luke and Leia had been together now about a month since their battle on Tatooine. They needed time after the battle to truly get to know each other and determine a plan of action to ultimately destroy the Emperor. They'd been enemies for a long time without truly knowing the other existed, and now they were working together to achieve the goal of both of their masters, destroy the Emperor. It wasn't easy though, it wasn't easy to get along, it wasn't easy to work together right away. Luke, he wanted to kill the Emperor to avenge Vader, his father. The Emperor had used Vader as a threatening machine, rather than allowing him to reach his full potential and just become a powerful Sith Lord. Vader believed the Emperor also played a direct role in separating him from his children. Luke was as close as one could be to being a Sith, but this time with his sister allowed him to become also more balanced as he learned about the light side of it from her. Leia, on the other hand, was a Jedi trained by Obi-Wan and also another master called Yoda. Leia described him to Luke as a small, wise, green Jedi that had been around for 900 or so years. He had eventually passed on into the Force a few years ago now, but Leia was trained by the best. She wanted to kill the Emperor to restore peace in the galaxy and let the leaders of the Rebellion lead a new Republic. She also, though, knew how to touch the darkness sometimes. It's how she'd killed Vader on Tatooine. She, like Luke, could balance in the light and the dark. But the two had been learning from each other. Together they'd plotted a way to get aboard the Death Star and confront the Emperor. They had a plan that should at least get them aboard the battle station. Whatever happens from there is anyone's guess. And over the last couple weeks, Luke and Leia had formed a plan getting into communication with the Wookiee leaders. They'd explained that they are warriors themselves attempting to kill the Emperor, but they needed the Wookiee's help. When the time comes, Luke and Leia will steal an Imperial ship while Wookiees fight off any Stormtrooper defense. Then, they will pretend to chase the ship Luke and Leia are in to the Death Star where Luke and Leia will have to make an emergency landing. And they go from there. That was the plan. Would it work? They'll see. And yet the plan was flawed, but it was likely to be their best shot. And the night approached before the big day came. Luke and Leia began to sleep among the trees. And as Luke dozed off, a vision, or a dream perhaps, began to emerge in his mind. Luke had never seen the Emperor with his own eyes, but in his vision, a wrinkled, old man with blood-red eyes stared at a figure. That figure, Luke came to realize, was Luke himself, and he was kneeling in front of him. That, that couldn't be. Luke kneeling in front of the Emperor, and next to him was his sister, Leia, dead on the ground from a lightsaber cut. The Emperor, in this vision, spoke to Luke. Good, Luke, good. My powerful apprentice you will become. Luke jolted awake. It was only a dream, but somehow it had lasted the entire night. The sun was rising now, and it was time to prepare to leave. Luke couldn't quite shake the dream, though. It was so real, like a premonition of the future. He would not, he would not bow down to the Emperor. He, he couldn't. He would not make the same mistake as his father. Luke and Leia packed everything they needed, and they met the Wookiees in their village outside of the Imperial base. The Imperial shuttle they were going to steal was just ahead, and after a bit of final plan discussions, Luke and Leia took off towards it, lightsabers ignited running to the base. The Wookiees emerged behind them, firing strong blasts at control panels and other ships to shut down any communication or escape. Luke and Leia took out the stormtroopers around the base. They were truly no match for the two children of Anakin Skywalker, and with quick and brutal precision, the stormtroopers were cut down or killed with the force without having any chance to relay communications outward. The plan was in motion. Luke and Leia got into the shuttle and took off. 
A group of Wookiees in salvaged ships from the wars followed behind them, pretending to fire critical shots at Luke and Leia. As the two approached the Death Star, they alerted the hangar bay that they were making an emergency landing with no time to discuss alternative options. The Wookiees made it look convincing with a few minor shots to the shuttle and then pulled away right as the shuttle slid into the hangar. Luke and Leia were in and they had no plans of sneaking around. They were here to bring an end to the Empire in honor of their fallen masters. As the shuttle skidded across the ground, they flipped out of it at once, reminiscent of Anakin and Obi-Wan back in the Clone Wars on the Invisible Hand. They flipped out, landing, igniting their sabers, and cutting down any stormtroopers in their way as they sprinted to the elevator door. As they entered the elevator, a small group of troopers were taken aback in shock inside of the elevator. Halt! You can't be here, one said with a shaky voice. Luke paid him no mind, and they looked at each other, looked at the troopers, cut them down rather easily. Stormtroopers were of no issue to these two at this point. Now, to the Emperor's office. Things were rather easy up to this point. Luke and Leia began rising through the battle station, and Leia couldn't help but speak her thoughts. I have a bad feeling about this, she told Luke. Luke responded, We've been preparing for a long time. We're ready for this. Kill the Emperor, and then you can rebuild it into whatever your rebellion wants. So you won't be joining us in the rebellion? Leia asked. Luke waited a moment before saying, I don't think so. I want to expand my power around the galaxy. Peacefully to your rebellion, of course. I have little interest in ruling a galaxy at this point. Rather, learning anything and everything I can about the Force. Very well then, said Leia, as they reached the top. The door opened, and five guards dressed in all red turned to them, weapons ready for battle. Luke and Leia ignited their lightsabers, and a voice spoke out from the background. Gods, don't be foolish. Leave us. Hesitantly, the guards put down their weapons, walked into the elevator after Luke and Leia had walked by them. The two then approached a set of stairs, and waiting at the top was the old, disheveled man that Luke had seen in his dream. Despite his looks, Luke and Leia felt an icy darkness. They'd felt darkness in Vader, but this was somehow so much different, so much worse. And he spoke. Finally, the children of Anakin Skywalker have come to me. It is as I predicted. Now the options for you are simple. Take your places at my side, or die. Leia spoke up immediately. Never. You've ruled this galaxy out of fear for long enough. Your rule ends today, Emperor. Palpatine simply turned to Luke. Predictable, isn't she, young Luke? The Jedi are blinded by their own definition of peace. Need I remind you, the galaxy was at peace before your rebellion emerged. You're mistaking peace with fear, Leia said. Luke still hadn't spoken. He was staring at Palpatine with an anger for what he did to his father. And Palpatine turned to him again. Luke, what is it you want? Power, I assume. Strengthen the force to become all-powerful. Only through me can you achieve the ultimate power in the galaxy, the power to cheat death, and even communicate with the dead. Join me and I will teach you to speak to your fallen father. Luke was shocked. He was taken aback. How could that be possible? He could talk to his father? He could still learn from his father? Kill her and take your place at my side. Begin your path to immortality, Palpatine said. Leia stepped in now. Enough! Luke, these are the same empty promises he made to our father. He's trying to do the same thing to you. Don't listen. Palpatine stared at them with a smile that had no happiness behind it, only evil. Luke knew Leia was right, but what if she wasn't? Seconds felt like years as Luke stood there, 
and then a voice spoke to him. Trust Leia. Luke didn't know who it was or even if it was real, but he had to listen. The decision was made. He'd made the decision moments ago. He was ready. He was going to do what he came here to do. Kill the Emperor. He ignited his red saber and said, You destroyed my father. Destroyed our family. I'll never join you. Leia ignited her blue lightsaber. Here they were, brother and sister, offspring of the Chosen One, fighting as one now. Palpatine's smile only grew. So be it, fools. You will now learn the true power of the dark side as you die. And without warning, Palpatine launched himself at the two rebels with a shrieking scream, his lightning fast strike sending Luke and Leia stumbling backwards. The sounds of clashing lightsabers immediately filled the room as the three combatants engaged in a deadly lightsaber dance. Palpatine's skill with a lightsaber was beyond impressive, something Luke and Leia had underestimated just looking at him. And still, the two fought as one, their movements rather synchronized and graceful as they fought the evil Sith Lord. Luke swung his lightsaber in a wide arc, forcing Palpatine to leap backwards to avoid his deadly blade, and Leia took advantage of the quick opening, launching herself at the Sith Lord now, with a flurry of lightsaber attacks. Palpatine was quick to counter, his own lightsaber deflecting his, her blows effortlessly, and with another snarl, he sent a strong burst of force lightning crackling toward the Jedi Princess, forcing her to leap away. As the fight continued, Luke and Leia realized Palpatine was toying with them. His strength was crazy. It was unlike anything they'd ever felt or even thought possible. He parried their attacks with ease, his movements almost bored and casual, predicting every move from Luke and Leia. The two exchanged a worried glance. They needed to figure this out fast. Palpatine began to cackle with glee, unleashing a blast of force lightning that sent both Luke and Leia flying across the room. They hit the wall with a thud, their sabers clattering to the ground. Palpatine strode over to them, his eyes gleaming with triumph. Your pathetic rebellion ends here, he sneered as he stared at Leia and began electrocuting her with immense power. He thought if he did this, Luke may turn, Luke may see his power and want it for himself. But Luke was determined and ready to learn by himself. He thought if he killed the Emperor, he could learn anything himself without any binds of a master or anyone holding him back. Luke was not defeated. He leapt to his feet, eyes blazing with dark power, and he channeled all of his hatred into a huge burst of force push that engulfed Palpatine, sending him reeling backwards. He hit the back of the stairs, Luke lifted him, and Leia joined in, forcing him, crushing him with her own force powers. Palpatine was no match now for the combined might of the two Jedi, holding him up, beginning to crush him with the Force. He shrieked in fury as he was consumed by their power, his body writhing in agony. And with a final burst of energy, Palpatine was gone. Sparks and smoke where he once stood. And Luke and Leia stood there, panting, their eyes wide with shock. They defeated the most powerful Sith Lord. They couldn't believe it, but they'd done it. They'd done what they came to do. They'd won. And now, they just had to destroy the battle station. They hadn't won yet. They knew the fight was far from over, but for now, they were victorious. But they had a plan. They made their way through the Death Star to the Death Star Cannon, and together, they ran their lightsabers through the control panels and then crushed the opening of the cannon with the force. The battle station was now set to fire, and it could not be shut off, and it was going to fire a blast in on itself. The two quickly made their way to the shuttle, escaping as alarms blared and panicked Empire troopers were focused only on escape. 
The shuttle, nar shuttle narrowly made it out as the battle station exploded into a million pieces. The station Luke had saved not long ago was now gone. He did it all for his father. He did it all for his own power, which he would achieve. Luke and Leia would go their separate ways, but they would embrace after this, swearing to always trust each other if either of them were ever in dire trouble, find each other. They embraced, and Luke headed off. They thanked each other for the help, and Luke went to go off on his own, learn all the powers of the Force, learn to cheat death, to truly do it. Leia went off to rebuild the Rebellion, to help reassemble the Fallen Rebellion, and build it in the Empire's place, taking out any Imperial remnants along the way with her own immense power. She was the Jedi the galaxy needed, and Luke was always around if she needed him.